what's going on YouTube putting a quick update video out there for you guys just to let you know what's going on with the tank what's changed what's new um, so from the, my last video I basically got rid of the huge elegance coral that I've been talking about thinking of replacing for quite a while so finally sold that off at my local fish store and with the credit I got um, got a couple uh, SPS frags uh, let's see if I can pick him up um, just four pieces um, first you got a green green slimer right there uh, this one's a Kelly's green coral or green Kelly's coral one of those two names uh, another one was uh, I got two millipores uh, one there and one there one's rose and one's blue I can't really tell which one's which at this point they both kind of look a little brown color to me but uh, anyway the primary purpose for this video is um, just to kind of talk about some of the issues that came up in the last couple of days um, decided to check my phosphate levels um, because I've been getting some algae issues again um, I was actually surprised how high it was um, first test I did with my HANA checker I got 0 0.13 I uh, tested it again this morning, it said 0.2 something, um, so somewhere probably in that range. Anyway, either one of those is too high, so I'm going to be focusing on, on that issue before I start adding any more SPS. I am going to add more SPS, but just want to get those uh, phosphate issues out of the, under control first of all. So, um, phosphates are one issue. Um, probably another side related issue because of phosphates is um, dinoflagellates. Um, I have been having like some green uh, or brown slimy algae on the sidewalls and they got that bubbly stuff going on. Mainly grows on the, on the glass. Um, it's not really an issue. Um, on the rocks or corals, but uh, from what I'm reading, I want to get rid of this thing uh, before it gets out of control. Because you know, um, I, I do read that you know, like they they have toxins, so you know, could explain why my snails have died off. I had I don't have one single snail left in my tank. Um, luckily, no issues with fish or coral, so that's good. And the third problem I'm seeing now is a surprising outbreak in flatworms again. I've only ever had flatworms uh, an outbreak once, never in this 30 gallon. I think I had it back when I had my BioCube days. Um, so if you look at this rock here, basically those red, they kind of look like red flakes those are flatworms so you got them there they are on on the rock right under the under the uh, red monty actually looks like a actually looks like coralline but it's actually a, a layer of flatworms and they are under or on the very edge of the rock uh, going around so like that edge going around and right there you kind of have like another layer they kind of look like that reddish brownish flaking uh, kind of stuff uh, but that's that so phosphates dinoflagellates and flatworms it's gonna be a fun weekend so I'm thinking of you know working on on those issues over the weekend I'm going to be using flatworm exit again um, doing a, a, a big water change um, I gotta do some work in my refugium because that six watt uh, LED light is not enough to maintain um, the microalgae that I grow 
I want to boost that light to kind of keep phosphates under controls, under control. Um, you know, during the treatment for the flatware magazine, I'm going to be running carbon, and, uh, GFO. Um, I would like to, you know, basically boost the light in my refugium um, and see if that works because I would rather not use GFO, you know, a, as a permanent solution. Um, I'd rather go the natural way and just go straight, you know, microalgae. But uh, for the time being, just to get things back under control, I'm going to be using GFO. So um, I'll post another video over the weekend just to kind of document my progress tackling those three issues. So until um, then, I'll take care and uh, talk to you guys soon.